Special Announcement The time has arrived, for a great secret to be revealed. A secret that has been hidden from mankind, since the beginning of the world. On July 29, 2013, a rare and historical star of David planetary alignment, occurred. The last one of its kind for over a hundred years. This is the signal we have been waiting for, in order to release this crucial information. Special Announcement A secret code has been discovered. Hidden in the Bible, for thousands of years. Because of recent advancements in human technology, we are only now beginning to decipher it. The first seven days of creation, is the first key to revealing this mystery. We will unveil it, for you now. Behold. The very first letter of the Bible is. G. The first incomplete word is. Gene. The first word is. Genesis. In other words the Bible begins with. The book of genes. The first seven days of creation, describe precisely, in stunning detail, the specifics of how DNA, is constructed. Watch carefully as we translate the code. Line by line. In the beginning, God created the heaven. And the earth. And the earth was without form, and void. And darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, Let there be a space between the waters, to separate the waters of the heavens, from the waters of the earth. And that is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth, from the waters of the heavens. God called the space sky, and evening passed. And morning came, marking the second day. And God said, Let the water, under the sky, be gathered to one place. And let dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters, called he, seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree, yielding fruit, after his kind, whose seed is in itself, upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself, after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights, in the expanse of the heavens, to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years. And let them serve as lights in the expanse of the sky, to give light on the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light, to rule the day. And the lesser light, to rule the night. He made the stars also. God placed them in the expanse of the heavens, to give light on the earth and to rule over the day, and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. 
and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly, the moving creature that hath life, and fowl, that may fly, above the earth, in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales. And every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly, after their kind, and every winged fowl, after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl, multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth, the living creature, after his kind. Cattle And creeping thing And beast of the earth After his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth, after his kind, and cattle, after their kind, and everything, that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man, in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion, over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth, upon the earth. So God created man, in his own image, in the image of God, created he, him, male, and female, created he, them, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion, over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth, upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which, is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and, behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens, and the earth, were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day, from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, and sanctified it. Because that in it, he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the gene, erations, of the heavens, and of the earth, when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth, and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it, was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it, grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man, to till the ground. But there went up a mist, from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man, of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life. And man became a living soul. What you have just witnessed, was a visual representation, of the first seven days of creation, as it is written in the book of Genesis. This image was sketched, hundreds of years ago by Freemasons, who understood the mystery, and have kept its secrets hidden, until the time was right for them to be revealed.
This image is sometimes referred to as the Holy Royal Arch. Even the name itself hides clues as to what its original meaning is. If you are still viewing this message, congratulations! You now have the first half of the mystery of Genesis solved. It is time for the second half to be deciphered. Are you ready? Behold! This image is also a visual representation of a nucleotide, the fundamental building block of DNA. However, this isn't just any nucleotide. This is the original, uncorrupted DNA of Adam and Eve, before the fall. Observe. The masculine pillar of J. Kin, or heaven, represents the chemical element hydrogen. The sun represents, Christ Jesus. The feminine pillar of Boaz, or earth, represents a mysterious chemical element, which existed before the fall of man. That is to say, before Adam and Eve, partook of the forbidden fruit. The Bible refers to this element, as, the white stone, or as some call it, the philosopher's stone. This is the same chemical element, mentioned in Revelation 2, 17. The moon, represents, the woman of the apocalypse, who many refer to, as, the Virgin Mary, the church, or even the nation of Israel. Either of which is a picture, of our original, pure state. The fruitful horn of plenty, or cornucopia, represents manna. The food of angels. The four living creatures represent the nitrogen bases of, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. Note that, uracil, or the lamb, has been sacrificed, and replaced by the lion, or thymine. The sacrifice is done, in order that, whether we wake or sleep, the DNA strands may live together, with him. The sky, is element 7, or nitrogen. Hence, the nitrogen bases. The dust of the ground, is the chemical element carbon, also known as 6, 6, 6. DNA, is surrounded by water. Are you getting the idea? It's now time for the sad part. In mankind's fallen state, the feminine pillar of Boaz, is now the chemical element, phosphorus. And the moon has been replaced with Venus, better known as, Lucifer, who many refer to, as the whore of Babylon, and Isis. The cornucopia, has become, deoxyribose, or sugar. And there you have it. A picture of DNA, embedded in the ancient text, that has been there, all this time. Incredible, isn't it? Now that the mystery of Genesis has been disclosed, it is also time to reveal, even more sad news. The last words of the Bible contain a very stern warning. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man, shall add, unto these things, God shall add, unto him, the plagues, that are written in this book. And if any man, shall take away from the words of the book, of this prophecy, God shall, take away his part, out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things, which are written, in this book. In other words, do not genetically modify what God had originally made, or else there will be severe consequences. As most of you listening to this message are aware, it has already happened. Genetically modified organisms are spreading across the planet, at an alarming rate, and their ill effects can already be witnessed, in a variety of ways, just as the book of Revelation had prophesied. 
Speaking of witnesses, who or what are the two witnesses? DNA, of course. Remember, DNA never lies. The angels have already begun to measure it and are detecting the obvious mass corruption. The elites of this world know that the time is short. Genetically modified, so called superhumans, are now being created in order to help the elites achieve godlike status and circumvent judgment. Monumental events, the likes of which has not been seen since the beginning of the world, will begin to unfold rapidly. It is too late to stop it. The human race has crossed the point of no return, and thus, the planetary self-destruct mechanism, has been activated. The Earth, and all surrounding planets, will be sterilized. By fire. This will ensure that no, GMO, cross-contamination, can spread, and harm, the rest of the universe. It is, an unfortunate, but necessary, requirement. The self-replicating nature of GMO makes it more dangerous than all other threats combined. The original, untainted, word of God DNA must remain intact. If only the elites would have learned to look through both eyes, instead of only their left eye. Ah, that's better. Maybe we would have been spared. Can you spot the third eye, or Christ consciousness, in this image? It is also referred to, as the chief cornerstone. Too bad the elites rejected it. However, there is good news. Good news to those that understand, and have kept their faith. A rescue mission has been prepared. As mentioned previously, the white stone of DNA has been corrupted by Lucifer. The woman of Revelation represents our new, incorruptible replacement. The white stone will have a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. This white stone will transform and upgrade our DNA. In addition, the white stone will be our personal, fourth dimensional, encryption key, that will allow us access into heaven, and ultimately, into the new heaven, and new earth replacement. Here is a sneak preview, of what our new DNA, may look like. It is, a 12 base construct, as hinted at, by Joseph in Genesis 37, verse 9. Soon, Joseph had another dream. And again he told his brothers about it. Listen, I have had another dream, he said. The sun, moon, and eleven stars, bowed low before me. This, royal DNA, is what the ultimate goal of the elites will be. To genetically engineer, a supreme being, that will soon rule the planet. Prepare yourselves. Now.